Hey everyone, Dr. Rupa here. We are going to be talking about lash serums and pregnancy. So if you want to have luscious long lashes in pregnancy, you're not sure what to use, keep watching. Welcome back everyone. I am Dr. Rupa Wong. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health. We talk about pediatric eye health and misaligned eyes. And then my passion, which is eye makeup health. So today we're gonna to be combining a little of the two. So I just finished my clinic today. So I had a bunch of patients and wrapping up the day. And I thought I would get on here and do a quick little video about lash serums in pregnancy because someone had just asked me about it and I happened to get a text from a friend. Her friend was freaking out about using Latisse while she was pregnant. So I thought a video on the topic would be a good idea. So first thing, there's a lot of different lash serums that have a similar active ingredient to Latisse. Now, Latisse is the only FDA approved medicine which can say on the bottle that it grows eyelashes. Hang on, I'll go get the the box because we sell it here in our office. There you go. This is Latisse. This is the box that it comes in. It is comprised mainly of just the active ingredient, which is bimatoprost. And as I've discussed on several videos before, that was a glaucoma drop that they discovered made your lashes grow. So you see right on here, it says RX only, prescription only. So you can only get it from a doctor writing your prescription you can still buy it at costco or wherever else you want to but you need to get it uh, with a prescription so with bimatoprost that's the solution that's the active ingredient that's the prostaglandin analog that's in latisse to make your lashes grow that is a pregnancy class c medication so what's the difference between the various pregnancy classes so the safest one is category a which shows that the studies have demonstrated if you use it during the first trimester you will not have any problems with your child the next level is category b that says that there are no risks that are documented or no studies have documented a risk to the fetus but you still need better controlled trials on pregnant women so it hasn't really been shown quite as much but no documented health risks from this medication so that's a category b so category c is that animal reproduction studies have shown a risk to the fetus and there are no well controlled human studies so is it likely maybe not but in animal studies it's been shown to cause problems so likely you don't want to be taking anything category c when you are pregnant, especially if it's for a cosmetic reason like this. I mean, if something were to happen to your child, you would always feel terrible that you used the Latisse, even if it was not likely to have been the culprit of the actual um, problem. So when I was pregnant with my kiddos, I had been using Latisse prior to the pregnancy and I discontinued it because I wanted to be on the safe side. I mean, how much of it is truly systemically absorbed? Very minimal. But again, it's really just about risks. And a category C medication is fine if it's a, you know, a medication for your blood pressure, something that's life-saving and it's going to be a big problem if you're not actually on it. But for something like lash serums, not as huge of a risk for you to actually be on this medication. You don't need to be on the medicine. So that's what you need to judge for yourself is, is, it, is the risk of something untoward happening to your fetus, is that worth it being on this medicine? All right, so does that mean that all the other beauty counter lash serums are safe then? Because they don't say they're category C. Well, they don't say they're category C because they are not regulated by the FDA. They're not regulated by the FDA because they're cosmetic and not a medication. Remember, so that's the that's the main difference, though many of them have the same type of active ingredient as Latisse, but because they're classified as cosmetics and not medication, they're not regulated, and therefore they don't need to put on the box any kind of warning about pregnancy. So you should really be mindful of that. So those medications include Grande Lash, New Lash, Lash Boost. Those all have prostaglandin analogs. You can check out my video on what's in your lash serum, which goes through all of that. Um, so you want to be careful about what you're putting into your eye. Now, what would I recommend if you are pregnant and you just want your lashes to look good? Well, first of all, during pregnancy, most people notice because of the hormones that their lash growth is phenomenal anyway. So you probably don't need all that much extra help. 
And then I would just say going with something natural and organic. There are a lot of different types of lash serums which have just peptides and biotin and those should be pretty safe in pregnancy. Some people use just coconut oil or castor oil and I've also got videos on those. They have not been demonstrated to actually grow your lashes, but they might make your lashes just look thicker and fuller and shinier and it just might make you feel better about yourself. Otherwise, I would really stay away from the ones that are prostaglandin analogs, either Latisse, anything that has isopropyl cloprestinate, anything that has that word cloprestinate in it, that's, an, uh, that's a prostaglandin analog. So likely it's going to carry the same pregnancy classification. It's more than likely going to be C if they had to even put that on the box, which they don't. So just know that not everything's on the box because most of them aren't being regulated. All right, guys, hope that was helpful for you and will relieve some of your fears about lash serums. If you found out you were pregnant and you were using a lash serum for a month or two as you, you know, were in the first trimester and you didn't even know, I mean, the likelihood of anything happening is going to be small, but there's always a chance. So I think it's just better to be on the safer side and just use something that doesn't have any kind of prostaglandin in it for your peace of mind more than anything else. All right, so make sure to hit the like, subscribe, do all of that so I know what kind of content you guys are interested in. And until next time, I will see you soon.